not telling anybody else to go there. But if they don't get right with God, mm -hmm. they'll go there. And it has nothing to do with their middle finger. Amen? Verse 3, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. So it talks about how jealous and hateful and envious we were. We see people getting stuff, and the next thing we know, we want what they have. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. No, I'm trying to serve God. I have no time to keep up with the Joneses or the Jameses or whoever else. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. See, he says, not by works of righteousness did he redeem us, but according to his mercy. Thank God for his mercy and his grace. Where would we be without the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ? We would be lost and without God. But thank God, I was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. God's amazing grace saved me, and his grace will lead me on. Meaning grace is not just a merited favor, it's the power of God to fulfill the will of God in this life. With the help and guidance of the Holy Ghost, the word of God, and Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We can fulfill the will of God. And if you're walking in step the Bible says Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. So God sees you not according to your own frailness but according to his power and according to his righteousness. We have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. That means he made us. That means it's a privilege. Not a right but a privilege so we don't have the right to try to tell God how holy we think we are because mm. we're nothing without him amen? amen we're nothing without Jesus this is powerful stuff I need to take my time which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord that being justified by his grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Do you understand? We have been made heirs. That means we have inherited eternal life and the blessings of God through Christ. God has saved us by the washing of regeneration, cleansing our hearts by the truth of the word. Some people take these verses totally out of contents and they want to say, oh, you got to be baptized in water. That has nothing to do with this. The washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes on the inside of you by your faith and trust in Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Because people can get baptized all day and still go out and live nasty, sinful lives. So salvation didn't come through baptism. Baptism is just another it's, it, it's a sign, okay, of obedience. It's a sign that you're making a testimony that you're saying that Jesus has saved you. But if Jesus hadn't saved you, being baptized does nothing for you. Amen? Doesn't do anything but get you wet. God ain't come to get you wet. He came to make you holy so that you can live a lifestyle of obedience to him. That's what the washing of regeneration is. That's what the renewing of the Holy Ghost in your heart. That means renewing, again, making new every day. God has filled me. I need him to fill me again. So I'm going to pour out what he's given me so that I can get a refill, amen, of God's holy power, his yoke-destroying Burden removing power.
and it is his and not mine. You understand what I'm saying? We're justified by his grace. We got, I think we can finish this. Verse 8, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou, it says these things I will that thou affirm constantly. That means you got to keep hammering at home that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Doing good works because you're saved, not trying to be saved by your good works. Amen? Amen. Verse 9. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Anybody trying to bring you back under Sabbath law? Anybody trying to tell you if you don't tie your curse? Anybody trying to tell you that if you, as a woman, put on a pair of pants, you're not saved because a, a woman shouldn't wear a garment pertaining unto a man? Do you understand? Men ain't got no business wearing women's pants. That's why they have women's clothing and men's clothing. The pants I wear are not things that, or the shorts I wear are not going to be the same as a woman's shorts. Amen? It's totally different. I don't wear capris. You understand what I'm saying? I don't wear panties, I wear boxers. That's what we're talking about. Has nothing to do with you wearing a dress or pants. People trying to go under the law. The Bible says avoid them. You tell them the truth, and if they don't want to hear it, get away from them. Avoid them like the Ebola virus. You understand what I'm saying? Verse 10, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Get away from these false teachings. Get away from these churches that are teaching truth and error. Truth and error still end up in error. You understand what I'm saying? Go somewhere where they're teaching the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And if a pastor wants to follow the Lord, then they're going to be inclined to want to know the whole truth and change. Even if the truth shows them that something they're doing is wrong, they humble themselves, repent, and change if they have to change their whole service. If they have to leave their denomination, wherever they need to be where they can teach the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, that's where they need to be. And if people want to keep coming at you and arguing over dumb stuff, the Bible says reject it. Amen. Knowing that he that is such is subverted, they're messed up in their mind, and sinneth, being condemned of himself. And then he gets into when I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to win her. And then he says, bring Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently that nothing be wanting unto them. So saints were encouraging one another. They said, receive this one and that one. These people were teaching the truth. They were not teaching heresy. You understand? They were not teaching Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal theology. They were only teaching what the Word of God says. It says, and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. All that are with me salute thee, greet them that love us in the faith. Grace, grace be with you all. Amen. We're to be supporting those who love us in the faith. And if people are truly Christians, they would acknowledge that the things that are being taught and preached here are in fact the word of God, are in fact uncorrupt, are in fact things that will help you grow in your relationship with Jesus and encourage you to know God for yourself through, teach, through praying, through reading God's word, through doing what the Bible says, you can draw close to Jesus. And it doesn't matter if you have a title behind your name because man's acknowledgement doesn't make you right with God. But if you're right with God, it doesn't matter if people acknowledge you or not. 
All I have to do is be faithful to God, and God will have a reward for me that no man can take away. Amen. I thank you for being here. I thank you for listening to the word of God. We pray that God's spirit will be with you as you continue to grow. And may you have the opportunity to listen to these sermons and just allow the truth to get into your heart. It will renew your mind. And that's to God's glory and not mine. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving me the strength to preach the gospel beyond my human capacities. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, and I trust you that when you allow me to preach and teach the word, that your spirit and your power is here with me, that truth may be communicated, and to those who are willing to listen, I pray, Lord God, that I have planted the seed of the word of God in hopes that it will take root in good ground, that they may bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold, the productivity of their life may be fruitful. Thank you, Lord. And I just pray your spirit will guide them into eternal life and that they will understand the truth of the gospel. For your word is life and you are the bread from heaven. And we call you Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Ancient of Days, the only bright and morning star. And you are the son of the living God, God's only begotten, virgin-born son. Amen. You died at Calvary. You rose from the dead. And because of what you did, we have eternal life for all eternity. We can serve you, love you, and grow in you. Allow your spirit to correct us. Give us wisdom and knowledge. Give us understanding and divine revelation of your word. And help us to not allow anyone to try to change or twist or corrupt God's holy word without us speaking out against it because God has given us the power to stand for the truth. Give us traveling mercies, protect us, and thank you, Lord, for allowing us to assemble ourselves once again in your presence, and we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us to walk in your way and to obey your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Go in his grace and praise the Lord.